Hello again, and uh, welcome to How Do You Know If It Works? Um, this module is going to be about evaluation. I'm Christopher Hermalik, Associate Professor of Spanish at Onondaga Community College in Syracuse, New York. I'm also a PhD student of Instructional Design, Development, and Evaluation at Syracuse University. And I'm Jennifer Quinlan at Brigham Young University. I work as an academic product consultant here on campus, helping our faculty develop blended and online coursework. I've been an instructional designer and taught French online and face-to-face, -face. and I think Chris and I are both feeling like it's really fun uh, being able to share some of our experiences with you. That, that's right, Jen. It's been, um, we've enjoyed this so far, and uh, I'm hope, we're hoping that you enjoyed the instructional design process up until now as well, too. And no matter what stage of the in instructional design process you've reached so far, you will undoubtedly benefit from taking the time to evaluate your instruction. This module is going to help you with this important, uh, but oftentimes overlooked aspect of instructional design. So by the end of this module, you should be able to define evaluation and explain the difference between evaluation and assessment, explain the importance of evaluation in backward design, as well as conduct a basic evaluation of your online course based on program objectives you set during the analysis step of your project. So let's review for just a moment. If you took part in any of the modules related to ADDIE, uh, this slide will hopefully look familiar to you. These are the five steps of ADDIE. These five steps tend to be present in most instructional design models, and you've hopefully considered the importance of analyzing and designing before beginning to develop your course. But did you remember the importance of evaluation throughout the process? So as you can see from the model that's on here, evaluate is connected by a dashed line to all of the other elements of this model. This demonstrates the importance of conducting formative evaluation throughout the entire instructional design process with the goal of gathering information that will allow you to revise your courses before you implement your course for your intended audience. So let's take a moment and look and see what evaluation actually is. What is evaluation? Uh, Michael Scriven is one of the most well-known names in the field of evaluation, and his definition from the evaluation thesaurus says that it is the process of determining the merit, worth, or value of something, or the product of that process. So in other words, an evaluation leads you to make a judgment, and then based on this judgment, you take action. So what is evaluation not? It's not simply measurement, which compares something to a standard, but doesn't assign a value or a merit to it. Data collection and data analysis are one piece of the evaluation process. And the second piece is determining from the data collected and analyzed what the merit, the rank, the importance, or the value of something actually is. So some key terms in evaluation. Uh, some things you might want to keep in mind are, for example, a formative evaluation is one which is conducted during the instructional design process with the purpose of providing feedback which can be used to revise and improve instruction before it is fully implemented. A summative evaluation occurs after instruction has been implemented. So a summative evaluation will most likely also provide information which will aid in the revision of instruction you most likely began to think about the intended outcomes of your course during the analyze phase of ADDIE. And when I say your intended outcomes of the course, what do you want your course to be able to accomplish? Do you want to be able to provide flexibility to students? Do you want to see certain increases in uh, learning outcomes as a result of this course? The types of things you most likely thought about in terms of what you would like as outcomes for your course. It's through a summative evaluation that you will look to see if the observed outcomes, which are the results seen during an evaluation, are comparable to those intended outcomes that you thought about during the analysis phase of your course design process. Now, let's take a moment to just make one small distinction. You've heard the words evaluation assessment used many times in these modules up until now. We want to be careful not to confuse them though. In an education context, evaluation determines the merit of a program. We measure the observed outcomes, 
compare to program objectives, assign value to the results. Assessment, on the other hand, is a measure used to determine whether learners have met learning objectives. I'm definitely oversimplifying it here, but in very simple terms, we evaluate instruction and we assess learning. We sometimes gather assessment data, well, oftentimes gather assessment data when performing evaluation of a course. But just keep in mind, they may be used interchangeably in some fields, but they're not the same thing in educational context. So you may be asking yourself, how do we go about conducting evaluation in the first place then? Jen is going to give you more information about this now. Jen? Thanks, Chris. Let's first talk about some basic standards. Everyone um, should have this context um, when they conduct an evaluation. Evaluation should be considered for utility, feasibility, propriety, and accuracy. These are important elements for a complete, unbiased, and useful evaluation, and one that's actually feasible to conduct. So let's get a little familiar with some of the methods and approaches to evaluation. In the early days of evaluation, there was a heavy focus on observational methods. Over time, evaluators found it wasn't necessarily the most reliable means of evaluating. So here are some of the key approaches and methods today. Expertise-oriented or consumer reviews generally are summative and they're user-focused. They usually involve an external review. Program-oriented approaches might be objectives-based or theory-based. Um, and a theory-based or logic model type program-oriented evaluation is usually formative, informational for your planning, facilitated by external sources. Whereas the objective-based is more summative usually and usually involves some external review. A decisions-oriented model like SIP or UFE are usually more comprehensive and user-focused. And a participant-oriented model is usually focused on empowerment. It's more developmental. The idea is um, ensuring social justice, being more naturalistic. So it's a lot to think about here. How do you know what's best for you? Well, it really depends on the purpose of your evaluation and who the evaluation is for. Who will be your audience? Most evaluators use a mixed methods or an eclectic practice. So don't get overwhelmed thinking, I have to pick one method that's the best fit. Really over time, as you evaluate what you've done, your practice and your, your ability will evolve and adapt. Um, the approach that's right for your program or your course also depends on resources. So that's just the reality. Time, money, and access to the data, those all matter. And uh, there are budgets. We all know we're beholden to budgets. And so uh, sometimes that dictates what kind of approach we take too. Um, let's talk about evaluation with the end in mind. So like Chris mentioned, there's kind of this backward design element with evaluation. We think about the desired results of our evaluation before we develop our evaluation plan and our questions. So Michael Patman, Michael Patton and Stephel Beam are two kind of pioneers of evaluation. They developed evaluation methods that are likely to be a pretty good fit for education, notably for a program or specifically for um, evaluating your online course. So the utilization focused evaluation is generally the primary purpose is to inform decisions. So it's a, it's a participatory model. You'll get input um, and data from users of your course, from other stakeholders, from teachers like yourself. Maybe you have a group of teachers teaching the same online course. So you'll involve all these people in gathering information that helps inform your evaluation. An objectives-focused evaluation you're really trying to determine whether or not the program objectives have been met. So like Chris was talking about having your course objectives and having good objectives in a uh, previous uh, module, we want to measure the whether or not the students have met those objectives. And so this type of evaluation might be really good. You want to know to what extent each objective has been achieved and that's uh, notably in the context of who your primary audience is, right? So once you figure out your method, then what? 
here's some basic evaluation strategies. I might already be beating this horse, but involve your stakeholders. So if you're in a secondary school, for example, your team of teachers, your principal, your superintendent, students, parents, those are probably all stakeholders. Some of those will be more valid stakeholders for what you're trying to do with your program. Uh, if you're in a higher ed setting or a government setting, your stakeholders will likely be a little bit different. Um, for me, my stakeholders are my dean, my section head, as well as my peers because we do have peer evaluation in our institution. So involve your stakeholders. With your stakeholders, identify the key issues and values for the program. So again, that's going to vary based on your institution. And then you'll create your evaluation questions. That's where you're thinking about what objectives do you want to meet with this evaluation? What will make this evaluation useful? Then you'll develop your means for measurement and data collection. And you want to make sure, again, that those are reliable and um, that they are uh, proprietary and that they're appropriate. Then identify the roles. Who will collect what data? Who will do what specific tasks associated with the evaluation? Maybe there's some obs observation involved. Develop a timeline. How often will we evaluate and by when will we produce an evaluation report? You got to have a budget. That's just what it is. And a reporting plan. How will you share the results of your evaluation? And then Addy, remember that last step, evaluate? Well, once you've evaluated your program, what will change as a result? Remember that uh, model that Chris showed. If the Addy process is not a linear thing, and once you hit evaluate, you're finished. Not at all. Once you evaluate, then you figure out, now what do we do? So as Patton says with the utilization focus, if stakeholders or implementers can't use the results of your evaluation, the evaluation may not be worth conducting. Chris, maybe you can sum up some important questions for us to consider in evaluation. Sure. Uh, when you begin to implement a program, be sure to have the end in mind. So a few different questions you may want to ask yourself would be, so for example, what are the desired results or the objectives of your program? How will you measure achieving the results? How will you collect and compile this data? These data, how will you know these data are reliable? How will you compile and share the data? And how will data be used to improve the program? As we think about this, we think about these questions and begin to put together our evaluation plan. It may also help be working with an instructional designer on your campus or with other members of your team who are helping you to develop your course if you're working with other members of, of, a, of a team of some sort to put together your course. They'll be able to provide you with some guidance and assistance along the way as well. And now it's your turn. Now it's time to work on creating your own evaluation. Uh, in the Dig Deeper section, we've provided a link to an evaluation worksheet that may be a great start to help you think about how to evaluate your program or your instruction that you're implementing. You can find this link, as I mentioned, the Dig Deeper section of the module. And of course, remember, you always have your mentor. You always have the distance learning special interest group community to lean on for support and ideas. And we look forward to hopefully being able to help you even further as you continue along the path toward developing uh, your first online course. Thank you.